This video is on perfect square trinomials. A perfect square trinomial is a polynomial you can write as parentheses dx to the n plus e close parentheses squared. All right, these letters right here, this d and e, both the D and E are real numbers. This N here, that N is a natural number. Basically, D and E can be any sorts of numbers. N, however, is a natural number, and natural numbers are your 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And this squared means there are two of these parentheses. Your x is just a variable. Take a moment to write this down if you want. In your notes, please leave a blank section right after this, because we're going to come back to this page. But before we do that, let's look at some examples of perfect square trinomials. So here are some examples of perfect square trinomials. So this right here is a perfect square trinomial, perfect square trinomial. Trinomial means three terms. So one term, two terms, three terms, one terms, two terms, three terms. These are called perfect squares because you can write it as this parentheses squared. And this one is a perfect square trinomial because you can write it as this parentheses squared. Now, how do I know that this is equal to this? Well, this thing right here, that exponent 2, means that this is the same as that parentheses multiplied by the parentheses two times. So you have x plus 3 times x plus 3. And if you were to do the math, you would see that this is equal to this. x times x is x squared. Your 3 times 3 gets 9. And if you were to take positive 3 times x and add it to this x times that 3, you would get your middle term right here, uh, positive 6x. Same for this second example over here. That exponent 2 means you have two of these x minus 5s. x times x gets you x squared. 
negative 5 times negative 5 gets you positive 25. And if I multiply my negative 5 times x and add it to those two multiplied together, x times negative 5, it's equal to negative 10x, which once again is your middle term. For both of these examples here, I chose monic quadratics, where there's a 1 in front, but perfect square trinomials do not actually need to have a 1 there. For example, this right here, this is a perfect square trinomial. And I know it because I can write that as this parentheses squared. And just to show that the two are equal again, that squared means there are two of these parentheses. Two x minus four times two x minus four. My two x times two x will get you the first term here. So the first one here times the first one there gets you the first one there. The last one, negative 4, times the last one, negative 4, gets you positive 16. And if I multiply these two, I get negative 8x. And I can add them to these two multiplied together, which will also get you negative 8x. You add that together, you get negative 16x, which once again is my middle term here. So those are three examples of perfect square trinomial. Let's go back to our first thing we talked about. So perfect square trinomials. It is a trinomial because it has three terms. This word square is talking about exponent 2. A little square there. But let's talk about this phrase right here perfect square. Perfect squares. Perfect squares are like 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, ooh, that's supposed to be squared, my mistake, 4 squared, 5 squared, etc. And that is, of course, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, etc. So these right here, 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25, are all perfect squares. And so part of the reason we call these things perfect square trinomials is if you were to look at our examples we just did, what you notice is that the coefficient, uh, our leading coefficient, uh, and our last number here, they're all perfect squares. So there's a 1 here and a 9, so two of our perfect squares. For our next example, we had a 1 and a 25. Once again, two of our perfect squares. first and last ones, 4 and 6, and once again, perfect squares. 
So this is why these are called perfect square trinomials, because there are three terms. You write it as a parentheses squared, and it's perfect squares for the first and last number. Okay, now how can you recognize if something is a perfect square? So let's say you're given this question, which of the following are perfect square trinomials? Okay, well, first of all, all uh, this has three terms, this has three terms, so we're already part way there. So in order to figure out whether this is a perfect square trinomial, you're going to see whether or not, can I write it as parentheses squared? All right, so this very first, uh, the first sort of subterm inside our parentheses is going to equal to this term, uh, the square root of this term. So square root of that term right there goes here. The square root of x squared, x, and uh, the number goes here, will be the square root of this one. So square root of 36 is 6. And finally, whether this is a plus or a minus will depend on this middle number. If this is a plus, then this is also a plus. Now, we need to check whether or not this will get that middle term positive 12x. So, Six times x plus x. Now, let's see whether or not when we multiply x plus six times x plus six, does it get us uh, this? Obviously, x times x will get us our x squared. Our six times six will get 36. So now we check that middle part. Six times x is six x. And we're going to add that to this one, multiply by that one. And that does equal 6x plus 6x does equal positive 12x, which is our middle term. So yes, this is a perfect square. And this is uh, the factored form of our perfect square. Let's do the same thing over here. So our first subterm, our first subterm inside of the parentheses is just the square root of this. Square root of four is two. Square root of x squared is x. Therefore, the square root of four x squared is two x. Our final subterm here is just the square root of our final term there. So square root of 25 is 5. Because this middle term right here has a minus, this one's going to be a minus. And once again, let's check to see whether or not these two things are equal.
because the way we got this two x here was by doing this four x squared, the square root of that. Therefore, of course, two x times two x is four x squared, because the way we got this five here was the square root of twenty five. Of course, negative five times negative five will equal twenty five. So let's just check that middle. Negative five times two x is negative ten x. We're going to add that to this one, negative five by this one, and two x times negative five, negative ten x. When we add that together, we get negative twenty x, which is this. So once again, yes, this is a perfect square trinomial, and this is the factored form for our perfect square trinomial. And just one more example. Let's see whether or not this is a perfect square trinomial. That question mark is just because we're not sure yet if it's equal. If it is equal, I should be able to write it as parentheses squared, where my first subterm should be the square root of this first term. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of x squared is x. So square root of 9x squared is 3x. Square root of 16 is 4. And because this is positive, the plus sign goes there. Right, and let's test for that middle term. 4 times 3x is 12x, and we add that to this one multiplied by this one. 3x times 4 is 12x. That equals 24x. That is different than our middle term over here, so therefore, these two are not equal. Uh, wait, this is not equal. So, because they are not equal, this is not a perfect square trinomial.